Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Sean, and in this video, we'll be going through part two of disassembling this Ford 4000 tractor to replace the input shaft seal. If you haven't seen part one, make sure to check it out right up here. I'll link the video and see how we got into this situation and why we're actually changing this input shaft seal. It's a few weeks after I started the first video, so I had to wait a while for parts to come in. Of course, it's over the holidays, so now we have all the parts in. We have seals, bearings, and a new clutch. So let's get started. Okay, so just going through a quick overview of the parts we ended up getting, we have a few different setup here. So a few bearings, and we have this small snap ring here, um, a seal, a couple more snap rings, a little larger snap rings. We have our outer gasket for the inside housing there. We have our big gasket for the outer bell housing here. Um, a small generic snap, snap ring that was just loose in the bag, so I'm not sure what the part number on that is and then this other seal here. All right, so if you can remember from the last time, the real problem we're trying to get to is this input shaft seal. Hopefully you can see that with the light. This input shaft seal was leaking um, pretty, pretty excessively. So that's the goal to get to that seal. And to get to that seal, we'll have to take off this bearing, this gear, which I'm still worried about being able to take that off from the front here enough that we can get that bearing out. It'll be very difficult, but we'll see. So let's get started. See, we can get this bearing off just by pulling it off. And this one, we have an internal C-clip as well as an external C-clip here. Easy enough, there's one down. Okay, so we'll get that one ordered based on this schematic. Oh, I thought there was gonna be some kind of clip in there, but I don't think so. And unfortunately, it does not look like we have enough room to get this bearing out. There's no way. This, this is already hitting the housing and there's not much back there, but uh, we'll give it a shot. I say the next thing we're gonna do is try to take off this plate here, see what we can get to, and then we'll try to get to these two snap rings on the top or upper input shaft bearing. <coughs> Good. Uh, There's a tough one. Okay, another one down. Now oh, let's see if this shaft comes out. I mean, the whole thing comes out. I was much expecting. Uh, unfortunately. Not enough of it's coming out. All right, well, I've been looking at this a little bit more and I'm able to pull this out probably about an inch to an inch and a quarter. And I was able to get my finger behind this plate here. Now this is just a bearing retainer plate on the schematic and what they call it on the parts diagram. And I'm able to get my finger behind it and feel that there's like a boss, like a smooth boss that retains this bearing in here. And then somehow this bearing on the inside is retained on this longer input shaft. So the only way I can think to try to separate this plate and the bearing and the shaft and the bearing, which are all separate parts, is hold it out this inch or so and try to tap on that bearing 
see if I can get it to slide back in towards the housing. Not a big fan of this method, but I really don't see anything else at this point. So let's see if this works. Of course, I have no idea how much progress this is making, if any. Okay, welcome back. It's a new day. I was able to borrow this engine hoist from my brother-in-law, so that should help out a lot. And really the goal for today now is to split the tractor here at the transmission. So being able to do that will bring this whole piece forward and allow us to push that lower shaft through so we can get that gear off. So to do that, we're gonna get to these eight to 10 bolts here or whatever's holding it on. And there'll be a few other miscellaneous bolts like these pedals and a few other things around. I did this job a couple years ago to do the PTO when it came out and tried to uh, redo the washer that's in there. So shouldn't be too bad taking this apart. Just have to remember how it went. So let's get to that and then we'll catch up with you guys once we get this supported. Okay, so we made good progress there. We uh, did make a little bit of a mess. Unfortunately, uh, not all of the uh, fluid was drained out of the bottom of the pan, but try to get that a little bit cleaner as we go. So this is what we have now. Have our blocking in the back for our rear end. We have the engine hoist over here that was able to pull the transmission and the fuel tank out. I'm not too big of a fan of how that's kind of squeezing the fuel tank, but. Uh, it's doing the job for now and you can see now back here that we need to find a way to take this shaft and pull it towards us a little bit so we can take that front pulley off and of course uh, there's a snap ring here so I'll have to look into this more to see just exactly how uh, how this shaft comes forward um, worst case this whole housing might end up coming off so I don't know, we're uh, gonna find that, find out as we go here. fighting. All right, what's next? This should slide off. And we have a snap ring with a bearing. And hopefully this whole thing slides towards us. Snap ring out. All right, fingers crossed this shaft comes out. Well, it's hung up a little bit on that lip, but should be able to come out. The snap ring's on this side. We'll give it a couple taps on the other side to see if that drives it through what we need. Let's 
Seems like it's going. Definitely going somewhere. All right, good. So our bearings out, just drove that shaft to the other side, so. All right, well, let's see about uh, driving that shaft the rest of the way through and getting this other side out. So let's go to the other side. All right, so this is what we're working with now. You can see I'm pretty much flush with that bottom gear. So I'm just gonna finish driving that through and hopefully that gear will come off. wedge behind here. Oh boy, look, I didn't notice this before, but I'm missing half a tooth right here. Hopefully I didn't do that. Well, I mean, I definitely, well, I most likely did it at some point, but hopefully I didn't do it while I was taking this apart. I never noticed that before, but yeah, unfortunately half of this tooth is missing. That's not good. Um, I don't really remember beating on this thing or prying on it, but I just don't see how that could have broken really any other way. It's really unfortunate actually, but now that that's out, oh boy, there we go. There's our piece and our bad bearing. So let's get this changed. Don't we'll worry about this lower gear. All right, so here we have basically the bearing that caused all of this. Even here, it's pretty nasty. So I have to figure out how to get this bearing off. This one still feels good. So let's get this bearing out of here and see how it looks. It looks like if I hit down through the center here, it'll knock this out. So, see if we can set something up here. Well, after looking at this a little bit more on the schematic, I can see here that uh, this is actually all one piece. So it might be hard to see on here. But this shaft, based on the parts diagram, is, let's see if we can focus, it's all one piece. So this shaft and this gear are all manufactured as one piece. Um, <clears throat> how that goes together, I'm not sure, but at least when you order it, it's one piece. So I don't think the pounding through the middle is gonna help us since this is all one piece here. And, the only other thing I can think of would be to find an internal gear puller, some kind of tool to be able to pull this gear out. But still trying to think about that. Um, we'll see. So that's kind of where we are now. All right, well, it's out. Um, luckily my father-in-law, my brother-in-law just stopped over for a minute. And my brother-in-law was able to see that uh, if we put, this shaft on the ground and hit the top of this shaft down through, that's what was able to get it out of there. So this bearing was sitting on here and then we had this outer housing. So we put this up on some blocks and then beat down on the shaft until the whole thing popped out, which was nice, and then just beat this bearing out through the housing, so this cover. Um, okay, so that's looking good. The only other thing really need to look at is on this shaft, we have a small groove worn into it here, and it's a little bit sharp on this chamfer edge here. So I wanna take a look at that, definitely get it 
uh, sand it down a little bit with some memory cloth or something just to make sure it's uh, smoother for that seal because it's right next to the seal surface. But other than that, I think we're pretty much at the final part of the disassembly stage. So uh, let's get working on reassembly. <laughs>